Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Stake. Interesting stat of the day, the Suns were up 16 in the first quarter and they completely blew it. Um, more on the finals in a little bit though. But I wanted to start off with an interesting topic. So back on Friday, the big news report came out that Navy Lillard is going to request a trade within the next coming days. And then um, Dame came out and said, no, I haven't made a final That's not true. I haven't made a final decision yet. Expect to be a Blazers uniform next season, but we'll see. Um, so let's dissect this. This could be a similar situation to Tom Brady. Now I know Damon Lillard won't be a free agent anytime soon. But a year before Tom Brady left New England, he knew he was going to leave New England. So Dame can know that as well, and therefore he can tell the front office, okay, this year it's finals or bust. Like, if you can't get me to the finals, if we don't get to the finals this year, I will request a trade for next year. That could be the case. Or if Damon Lillard doesn't like the moves that are made for agency, all that, or he feels like not enough moves were made to get to that point where he thinks he can make the finals, then he may say, okay, now I will request a trade. So I think one of those two scenarios got to go with the Tom Brady scenario, where it's like, okay, I'll just suck it up this year, hopefully get to the finals, and if not, I'll let the front office know I'm going to leave. Or tell them, like, hey, like you, it's not final, but if you can make some good free agent acquisitions, then this can become more final. So, well, I feel like that those are the two ways it could be leaning towards. But again, so that that means it wouldn't surprise me if he's in Blaze uniform next year. It's just long term. That's the question mark. Um, so what I want to do though is just in case he gets traded, is make up a top five list of trade destinations he should want to go, and what teams should go after him. Now the first option, this is the option I do not want at all as a basketball fan or as a fan of other teams. But the Golden State Warriors make a lot of sense here for both sides. I mean, going, I mean, playing in the West, training him in the West, not ideal. But other than that, it's like, this is perfect. So, with the London Blazers, you have two options here. You can either go retool or rebuild. So, if you go retool, then you can make this trade, get rid of Damian Lillard, and you get Clay Thompson in return, plus Andrew Wiggins, plus James Wiseman, plus a lottery pick. Well, actually, yeah, Damian Lillard, yeah. Maybe two lottery picks if you can force that, but at least one of them, the seventh pick, not the 14th one. Or if you go the um, rebuild route, then you just go Wiggins, Wiseman, and then both first round picks automatically, and then and then call it good maybe. So that so that so it's kind of predicament there. But either way, though, the, the Blazers would benefit from it. Because if you can get Clay Thompson, and let's say Clay Thompson comes back healthy, that may take him a little bit to kind of shake the rust off and all that. But let's say he comes back good and comes back near himself, then Clay Thompson and CJ McCollum duo, that's good enough to get sneak into the playoffs in the Western Conference. That's it's good enough to be in, be sort of relevant. Now it's not championship contender status, but oh well, at least you'll be relevant. Um, so if I'm or if you want to go rebuild, right? Like I said, that's fine. So if I'm the Blazers, I gotta consider that. The second option is the Dallas Mavericks. We all know Mark Cuban needs to get him a second star. The new GM from Nike has a relationship with Dame. If the pairing of Dame, oh no, sorry, if the pairing of Clay and Steph, if we feel like that's the best backcourt of all time, then what are we going to say about a duo of Damian Willard and Luca? They would surpass Steph and Clay as the best backcourt of all time. I'm sorry. They would. Um, now, as far as the trade package goes for the Mavs, you obviously can trade Porzingis. Um, you may have to give up Jalen Brunson because it seems like Blazers would want a point guard in return. Um, and then they can give up a 3 and D guy, Maxi Cleaver, like they because that's what they need desperately. And then a first round pick, maybe two for the future. Who knows? Um, so if you're Portland, you get scores like. Yeah, Porzingis is not a good score as Damon Lillard, but he'll provide some scoring to help show the load off CJ McCollum, especially in the regular season. And then, again, Brunson's a good point guard coming off the bench, but if you want to start him, he can be a good starting point guard. He won't be great, but he could be good enough. And like I said, Max Clipper, good 3D guy. So I feel like that's a good enough package right there. And I feel like if you can get that in return, then you just might be able to still make the playoffs and be somewhat relevant with that. Um, well, um, so if I'm Blazers, I would consider that. He also got his side. It's like, do you want him, like, do you want him, like, in his hometown at the Warriors and being him and Steph for the next five, ten years? Or were you like, okay, I'd rather take my chances with him and Luca together than him and Steph? It's something Blazers about to decide there. Um, three, 
is, believe it or not, actually Utah. You may scoff at this idea, but Donovan Mitchell is not the happiest of people right now. And if you don't get at least to the finals in a year or two, he may start getting that inkling to request a trade. So you got to keep him happy. Bring in Dame, and he can carry the burden off Mitchell's shoulders. And Dame is absolutely not as injured prone as McCollin, which would help. Um, so the Jazz would have to do would have to do a couple things. They would, they would have to re-sign McCollin to do a sign-in trade. I'm not sure if McCollin would want to do it or not, but he'd have to be willing to agree to, to do a sign-in trade there since he's a free agent. And then, they have, and then they're going to throw in favors. They've already reported they want to throw in favors in any deal. Then they're going to have to throw in favorite Joe Ingles, in my opinion, and then two first-round picks. And if that's not enough, then you can throw in Bonal Bogdanovich, but I'm if I'm the Jazz, I'm going to throw that in first things first. I'll see if this offer would be good enough. If not, I'm going to throw Bogdanovich in. And if you can get that for the Blazers, that's a very good enough offer. That's kind of like the same, along the same lines as and the Mavs are, what the Mavs are offering. It's a pretty good deal back. And it's like, if you're the Blazers, you're like, okay, I feel like him and Mitchell, well, again, that might be a better backcourt than Steph Clay. Um, I, you may be thinking, okay, I'd rather take my chances with him being just in Utah than him in a bigger market like Golden State or Dallas or something like that. So that's an option there. Four is Philly. If you are if you pair Lillard and Bede because of Eastern Conference not being as strong, automatically a final team. I know the Nets have their big three and the Bucks and the Vons right now, but Damian Lillard and Embiid, assuming both of them are healthy, they would get to the finals. Now, you're going to sacrifice some defense here because you're going to have to trade some defense players. You're going to have to trade Ben Simmons, who's a lead defender. You're going to have to trade the Hybel, most likely. And if I were Blazers, I'd try to also trade for Seth Curry. So that would be those three guys, and then like a, and then two first-round picks or, or a first-round pick, whatever. So that way you pick up a former All-Star, you get two great defenders, you get Curry, who we know could bring in a pick. So, And we know the 76ers Darryl, GM Daryl Moore is aggressive GM. So if he wants the 76ers to win a title, and get past the big three, the Nets, or even the Bucks. First of all, they got to get Sims off their hands. The next, they got to make a big move, and this could be the big move that they need. Fifth is Boston. Think about it. Good culture. Um, Lillard and Tatum would be in the East Conference Finals, in my opinion, automatically. Finals, we'll see, because I feel like an Embiid Dame is a better duo than a Tatum Dame, but we'll see. Um, that at least make East Conference Finals. Um, which they have gone in multiple times with just Jalen Brown. But Portland, in return, you get a nice, good borderline slash all-star player and, and Jalen Brown's a good defender. You get you, you can get another defender, Marcus Smart, who's a good culture guy setter there. And then you can get also a bunch of picks, which Boston happens to have a lot of picks. Um, so there you go. I feel like that. And, and, or if you want to get, throw in Tristan Thompson or something, veteran player, you can do that. So I feel like that's a good option to return for the Blazers. And if you're Boston, I feel like you got to make that move because you can't just stand pat on Tatum and Brown if you want to win the championship. Now, there are some other options I left out this list on purpose. Let's start with the Heat. Yes, good culture, good owner, head coach. You know, we, we all know that. But if I'm Portland, even if I can get out of Bio and Hero and Kendrick Nunn and Picks, that doesn't sound appealing as an offer as the other ones I threw out there. Plus, with the Dame of Butler combo, yes, I know Butler. And was able to take his team to the finals once by himself. That's in the bubble. Completely different scenario. I feel like Dame Butler combo. I just I feel like that's not going to get you to the finals. In fact, I feel like you could still get upset in the second round in the Eastern Conference. I feel like that's just not a good duo there, um, stylistic wise. So I feel like that's why I would I would put that kind of sixth place. Now Lakers are next, and we know I think Dame would love to play with LeBron. And if you're Portland, there's no way you trade Dame without getting AD return, especially since Lakers don't have like a lot of good picks, and they really don't have any good role players to offer you either. Kuzma and KCP, it's like, nah, nah, I, ideally good role players I would want. So you have to get AD return, a brilliant AD, so, so you can be so relevant. But the problem is, if you're Dame, this is more problem if you're Dame on this one. Yes, playing with LeBron sounds appealing, but LeBron's old, and he's coming off the bad injury let's say next season he stays healthy but the next season he's re-injured again like we just with his age and with the way he is now we just don't know if he can be reliable or if he's going to start to get injury and if lebron's out then dame's got to carry the whole team which he does not want to do so therefore i feel like this is a very risky move now if lebron's healthy and you have dame obviously championship contender obviously you can win the championship 
But if LeBron gets injured because of his old age, which you have to keep in mind, he risked it all for nothing. So that's why that's kind of a risky one. I want to avoid that. Um, and I don't know why on earth um, people are talking about the Knicks as an option for him. Like, I know it's a big market, but bad owner, he would have to play, he would have to play defense 82 games with Thibodeau. And as we've seen many, many times in the playoffs, they wear down in the playoffs because they play so hard throughout 82 games. So that's so they'd be out in the second round, the most by the Eastern in the Eastern Conference, so that's just not a good situation for him. And then a dark horse contender has been thrown out there is the Clippers, Blazers get um, Paul George, maybe Marcus Moore Sr., Patrick Beverly, all good defenders and good players, and then some picks um, that won't be picks for a long time because Clippers have traded a lot of them away already. Um, so that would work out for both teams, all oh, for mainly Portland. So you get Paul George and you'd be relevant, you'd be you'd be a contender for sure. And then, you, Dame, you're worth Kawhi if he resigns, and that's a deadly do right there. However, again, this is kind of like the Lakers factor here with Kawhi's injury, especially since he's going to be at least half a year next year. It's like, do you want to risk that and be with him if he's just, when he's so injury prone? So that's why he's not on my top of my list either. So again, to repeat, you got um, Golden State 1, Dallas 2, Utah 3, Philly 4, Boston 5. So we'll see what happens. Um, so I do want to talk about the finals real quick. So I still could be right. The Suns can somehow come back and win. But it appears I was way off about my prediction. Now keep in mind, Dario Sarge injury his ACL in Game 1 has been a bigger factor than we realized. Because besides Aiton, yeah, Crowdo's a good physical man and all that, but they don't really have any size in defenders, and that's the only thing that could stop Giannis. So therefore, they able to stop Giannis, and when they don't stop Giannis, they'll be up for Middleton and Holiday, uh, Tucker and Portis and all them, so... That's why it's been really hard for the Suns to try to win and stop the bleeding here on this three-game losing streak. But here is the bigger reason why I may end up being wrong. The team with the most playoff experience usually wins the finals. And I and I usually go with the team that has most I usually do that because I know that. But because I was like, yeah, Bucks are just too consistent. I'm not sure what I'm going to get with them day in, day out. I know what I'm going to get with the Suns. They've just been looking so good. Despite, you know, playing teams with the star players, they've just been looking so good. Um, this is like looks like it's destiny for Chris Paul to finally win his finals. Like, that's why I mainly picked the Suns. So, again, went with my heart there instead of the head. Um, also being a Suns fan, that's also why I picked them. But um, in the future... When you pick the finals, and when we come around again next year at this time, we got to remember, okay, the team with the most final experience, unless injuries happen, will usually win. So, therefore, keep that in mind next year. Um, so, we'll see if the Bucks can close it out um, Tuesday night. So, thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel. Tell me about me. Thank you very much. You all have a wonderful day.